Hello everybody, my name is Kaiwan. Today I'm going to do a full review about this Godox AD1200 Pro super powerful strobe. So let's get started. First, this lamp pad is so lightweight, it just weighed 1.3 kilograms with reflector. So it's so light, you can fly this light wherever you want. But this control box is so heavy, it is 5.8 kilograms with battery. So, so maybe you or your assistant need to change the light position and you need to carry this control box with you. And you think this control box is huge and heavy, you can take away the battery and this control box is easier to carry around. This huge battery, it's easy to take it out and put it back in. All the buttons on the control box are backlit, so it's easy to change the settings in the dark. And I really like Godox to show you the T.1 flash duration. It's easier to know how fast the movement you can freeze. On the control box, you can choose between two different power step display, it depends on your needs. This modeling lamp is bright enough to work in a dark studio, but this modeling lamp have a big problem. It won't black out during the exposure. So if you are going to do a long exposure shot, and this modeling lamp will just ruin your shot. Or you need to manually disable the modeling lamp. This is just not a good design. The fan on the lamp head and the control box are so loud. They will just keep spinning after you turn the power on. You cannot turn it off manually. This cable length is 3.5 meters, but if you damage this cable, you cannot change it by yourself because it's sticked with this lamp head. So if you damage this cable, you need to send the whole lamp head to someone to fix it. This connector is easy to connect and remove. And this connector style is pretty much identical to the bronze color system. I like this angle adjust design because they put the lamp head in front of this break-in system. So it's easier to tilt this light with a huge light modifiers. This break-in system is kind of hard to lock and release, but it's tight enough to hold those heavy modifiers. And I know lots of user ask for the umbrella holder. So the umbrella holder is over here. This Bowen's mount is tight and secure it's easy to connect and remove different light modifiers. Next, we're going to test the color temperature and the light output. Is it consistent or not? Let's find it out. I shoot 100 photos with the same exposure, and I set the strobe to three different power settings. Full power, 1 16th, and 1 256th. At full power, the color temperature is plus and minus 26. The green and magenta shift is around 10.6%, and we missed five photos during the test. The color temperature is already super stable, but the green and magenta shift is kind of crazy. The color just keeps jumping around. So next, 1 16th, color temperature plus and minus 24. 4.7% green magenta shift, and we still miss four photos through the entire test. The power at 1 16th, the color temperature is still super stable. The green magenta shift is significantly better. Next test, 1 256th, the color temperature is plus and minus 77. 10.1% green magenta shift, and we still miss three photos in this test. In 1 256 power settings, the color temperature start to jump around, and the green and magenta color shift start to jump around again. Plus minus 102 Kelvin through the entire power range. Acceptable and I think it's pretty good. But the green and magenta color shift is around 18.4%. This number is not too good. And we do another test with color temperature stable mode on. We run through exactly the same test. Color temperature stable mode on at full power. Plus minus 33 Kelvin. 5.3% green and magenta shift. And the strobe didn't flash for three times. At full power, the color temperature is pretty stable. But full power without color color temperature mode on is even more stable. This is weird. But we got more stable green magenta shift. Next test, 1 16th power, plus and minus 35 Kelvin, 3.3% green magenta shift, missed two photos. So it's the same with color temperature stable mode on. The color temperature is not as stable as the 1 16th power without color stable mode on. And we got better control of the green magenta shift in this power setting. Next test, 1 256 power settings, color temperature plus and minus 38 for 10% and green magenta color shift and we still miss two photos. At this minimum power settings, the color temperature is much more stable compared to the minimum settings without the color temperature stable mode on. But the green magenta shift is even worse. 14% of green magenta shift is kind of unfortunate. With the color temperature stable mode on, the color temperature is plus and minus 68 through the entire power range. The green magenta color shift is 16.7%. So with color temperature stable mode on, the color 
cold temperature and the green magenta shift is just a little bit stabler. Next test is the flash duration test. So in one eighth power settings, it's impossible to freeze the fast motion like a water drop. Photo looks pretty blurry. At one sixteenth power settings, it's a little bit better, but it's still kind of blurry. At one thirty tooth, we finally got super sharp photos, but we are just using 37 watts of power. So I check out other competitors like Brown Colors. The Brown Color 800 watt strobe even outperformed this 1200 watt Godox. And if we turn on color temperature stable mode, it will be even worse. We lose another two stop of light with the same flash duration. I make a little graph to show you guys the flash duration compared to Brown Color Cirrus 800L with the Godox 1200 Pro. So if you're going to freeze some super fast motion, maybe Brown Color will be a better choice. Okay, so this is the end of this Godox 8200 Pro. So if you think this video is helpful, press a like, make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel to check out more video like this. If you want to watch more video like this, check out this playlist. My name is Kai Wan, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.